hello everyone and welcome back to glancer before we get started if you are new to the channel and haven't subscribed yet make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon so you never miss an update in my previous video i have discussed about what i mean by supervise the systems and why we are going to use them and we have discussed also the features uh, involved in supervised the systems and in this video we are going to discuss only about unsupervised systems so let's get started what i mean by unsupervised unsupervised in unsupervised we are going to deal only with unlabeled data right if you want to know what is meant by unlabeled data then check the video of system paradigms there i have given you brief what is meant by unlabeled data after that come back to this video okay so let's see the first point again again we discuss what what is the main aim of this particular system in order to tackle the problem of words and disambiguation right so that is the main aim of all these systems so the first point says that unsupervised systems for word sense disambiguation tackle the problem without relying heavily on manually annotated data so in supervised systems those systems are highly dependent on human effort right but there in this unsupervised system there is no need for any algorithm to rely on human annotated data so it is independent of this human annotated data so then our second point is these systems are essential due to the scarcity of labeled data for every sense of each word in a given language see if you don't have labeled data proper labeled data then you can go with this unsupervised systems okay this is what is told in this particular sentence and the fourth point and third point is the key strategies include clustering distance metrics and leveraging cross linguistic evidence see these are nothing but the algorithms uh maybe you have certain idea about what is mean by k means clustering algorithms there you are going to create different clusters based on the given data set and after finding those clusters whenever you give new data to that particular algorithm it will predict to which particular cluster that particular uh, thing is belonging to so that is mean by clustering so if you want any uh, brief about this k means clustering go and check any youtube videos available okay just you you don't need actually uh, very deep information about this but if you have general info that is enough okay so let's uh, know what are the key approaches in this unsupervised systems so the first approach is you are going to group similar instances of words into clusters where each cluster represents a different sense of a word let me draw here see take uh, a bunch of words okay i mean many words take different kinds of words and the first thing is uh, there are different kinds of words with you so these are those words these are those words this is the first word this is the second word and this is the third word so take the first word this is the first word right first word and take the second word form a cluster word 2 form a cluster and take the third one third word and again form a cluster this is word 3 so and there are uh, other remaining words also right so take this word if the meaning of this particular word is matching with this particular word then add it to this cluster and the third word if the meaning of this word is matching with this particular word then add it to this cluster and if the meaning of this particular word is matching with the third cluster then add it to this cluster so you have to repeat these steps until all the words are aligned to their certain clusters so this is how this is one of the approach this is how you are going to do k means clustering okay and the third approach is use a measure of semantic distance to determine the sense of a word by finding how close it is known senses in a semantic network like wordnet uh about wordnet you will be discussing in the further videos but let's understand what this particular sentence is saying see take word 1 and take word 2 
and you have to determine the distance between them i mean distance is not it doesn't mean you have to find how this particular word is far from this particular word it, it doesn't mean that distance the distance in the sense how uh, how close is this particular word to the meaning of this particular word you are understanding right you have to just measure that distance you have to measure the distance in order to find how close this particular word is to this particular word okay so this is actually done by using this word net about this word net you are going to discuss in the further videos and the third approach is start with a few examples of word sense and grow this example into larger clusters so here you can see you just considered only few words and you have formed three clusters from it and here also you have just considered only two words and you are measuring the distance between those words and the third approach saying what it is saying is you consider you add some more words to this particular bag and you just you just align those particular words to the corresponding clusters and the same thing goes with it you add another word that is word 3 and find out the distance between this word and this this word so this these are the key approaches and the and the advantages is you can easily say that it won't be using any uh, annotated data that means you it doesn't require any manual effort right and also you can discover new senses not present in predefined sense inventories so when you when you are dealing with uh, unlabeled data there might be a chances that you can discover new senses from a given word okay and coming to the limitations what are the limitations is so i have already said that these uh, unsupervised systems are not better than supervised right it means that it doesn't achieve any high accuracy if if in case you have to achieve high accuracy then you require sophisticated algorithms okay so and the second point says that that performance is lower when it is compared to supervised systems okay so this is about unsupervised systems so in the next video we are going to discuss about semi supervised systems so i think that is the end of the system paradigm thank you so much for watching till end i noticed that many of you were watching my content but haven't subscribed yet if you feel these lectures are really helping you please consider subscribing to the channel it really motivates me to create more content like this and don't forget to like and share with your friends who might find it useful see you in the next video